Let me answer this question in a way uh, that people, uh, you know, that I can really give you some information here. So just give me a second. Let me look up um, some answers here for not some not the answers, but like um, the resources I want you to take a look at. Okay, our, so our student Titus asks, what exercises do you use to multitask on the piano? So I'm not sure I quite understand the question. Uh, it's phrased in a way I, I don't, I'm not used to. Um, but I, uh, I'm basically gonna answer this in the way, what exercises do I recommend that will help you uh, with hand independence? Well, the first thing I wanna tell you, and I'll remind you at the end uh, here, is that you definitely wanna check out the lesson I put out recently about the practice routine. Uh, for two-handed piano playing. It was released just the other day. And when I have the video up, I'll post some links around uh, so you can find it. I highly recommend you check that out. But some of the things we did cover in the lesson that uh, you know really apply to this question are the first thing really is Hannon exercises. So you just type in Hannon exercises into uh, Google. I also included a bunch of links in the video I just mentioned. And um, this will basically get you down with the basics of syncing up both hands um, together. Now that's not what I would call multitasking, but it's on your way to doing that. You really can't um, learn hand independence where you're playing, you know, t two different things uh, on the piano at one time. I didn't even have the keyboard on. Um, but you can't do that without learning these things first. Another thing I recommend you take a look at again, I'll try to remember to put it in the description, is pianoexercises.org slash exercises slash charney. But if you type in charney, C-Z-E-R-N-Y, exercises into Google, it will take you here. Um, and then there are a ton. Oh, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here so you can see what's happening. Um, so as you can see, there are a ton of different exercises to choose from. You know, this 500 progressive studies or even the School of Velocity uh, right here, they're not really a bad pick at all. In fact, a charity is probably even better at what you're talking about, assuming if I have the uh, multitasking uh, part of your question, I understand it correctly. Because a lot of these, as you can see, there's actually different things going on between each hand, but it's still not real complicated. So again, this is a real good segue into going from syncing up both hands together like you would in a hand and exercise. You have something a little bit more where you're playing, you know, chords, you know, and then changing chords, just like that. And as you go through the school of velocity here, as you can see, it changes it up where, oh wait, let me show you uh, on the sheet here. As you can see, you know, just through exercise number two here on the Cherney school of velocity, is that now there's like even different things going on. You have scales in your left hand and then chords in your right. Another thing I wanna mention is learn your scales as well. But like I said, all this is covered, um, you know, in a much broader scope on the uh, lesson I had mentioned, the practice routine for two-handed piano playing. So that uh, should get at least get you started with it. Um, there are other things once you finish learning those, there are a lot of them to learn. But when, when you're starting to really outgrow these, then you can learn um, some Bach preludes. Those are really good for two-handed piano playing or some Bach inventions as well are really great. But very good question. So let me get on uh, to the next one. And remember that the lesson I was talking about is called uh, the practice, I believe it's called the practice routine for two-handed piano playing. I'll make sure to link it uh, once I post up this video. Uh, hello from Munich, says Iris. Hello, Iris. Welcome back again. Aloha, Tim, says Crimson. Greetings from Hawaii. All right, any other questions on two-handed uh, piano playing? If not, I'm going to have to figure out something. <laughs> there has to be some. Okay, um, hmm. All right, thank you very much, Catherine. I really, really appreciate that. Welcome out to the live stream. 
I think you had been here before. I've definitely seen your name before, whether it's on the website uh, or, or over here on the channel. At least I'm pretty sure. Okay, let me talk about this really quick because um, it's going to fill in some time here. Okay, here we go. Okay, real quick, I want to talk about what you should be focusing on when you're playing two hands together. So obviously, the first answer is notes, right? And then from there, I really, honestly, if you are learning how to play two-handed piano playing and you're struggling, you really should uh, make it as simple as possible. So the first thing you should do is just concentrate on the notes. So if I'm playing this for the first time, obviously, I'm going to go a little bit slower. And I'm totally ignoring any kind of dynamics or different, you know, staccatos or things like that. Just like that. So just concentrate on the notes and then layer it up like we talked about in the practice routine for two-handed piano playing, which I'll link you to at the end of this discussion. Then what you want to do is you obviously then focus on speed. So first notes, then speed. Uh, maybe you don't even have to get it all the way up before you layering, uh, layer on the next thing I'm going to talk about. But try to play it a little bit faster than I just did. And then, after I get it a little bit faster, then I'm actually going to concentrate next on the dynamics, which is how loud you play. I'm still not paying attention to the staccatos or the accents there, because I'm going to layer those on next. So you're, you're going to use kind of a layering technique when you're playing two hands together. The first thing you obviously want to do, notes, right? And then what? Speed. And then what? Dynamics. And then what? Uh, and then everything else pretty much. So I'm going to add in dynamics now. And I actually was able to also add in the staccatos and the legatos as well in that playthrough, you might not be able to do that. You might not be able to add too many things at once. Because if you're trying to concentrate on the notes, trying to concentrate on the speed, uh, trying to concentrate on the dynamics, or trying to concentrate on everything else all at once, it can be a very, very frustrating. So my big, big tip for you, an additional tip, is to really just simplify things and then uh, add them on in layers. So remember also to check out that uh, practice routine for two-handed piano playing. I'll link it to you when I post the video, of course. Okay, I thought I had seen your name uh, in the website, actually, Catherine. Yeah, registering for the website. So welcome, and thank you for obviously enrolling in some courses. Uh, also, Awesome. Okay, how to practice ornaments. I'm going to have to do a, a one all on that on its own. There are, let me let me direct you to some that I've done, because um, I, I really will just have to do, I know it's not the answer you wanted to hear, but <laughs> I'm going to have to do an, uh, a lesson all on ornaments all on its own. All right, but I want to lead you to somewhere, so let me kind of figure out what's happening here. All right, uh, let's check it out, check it out. Oh, by the way, this is the lesson I was just talking about a second ago, the easy two-handed piano playing practice routine. So if you really want to get better at that and all the stuff we're talking about tonight, 
uh, check that out. Uh, okay, playlists. Hopefully, I, I mean, I'm going to be able to find it. Okay, I want you to check out uh, musical symbols and articulations. So, I do not need this. No, no thank you. Um, okay. Okay, so I highly recommend you check out this playlist I have on the channel called Musical Symbols and Articulations. It's going to have some of the things you want in there because we do uh, – I did talk about trills. I did have the staccato legato lesson. That was from a while ago. In fact, I'm going to remake that one. We have the dynamics. That's not really an ornament though. You, we do have mordants in here. So we do have some of the lessons that you want uh, already. But like I said, to do one all on, on all ornaments – um, or, or even another specific one. I'd have to make a lesson for that, but I think that you can use this playlist uh, to your advantage. So let me link this to you, uh, or to everybody that's curious. So just give me a second. I'm not really going anywhere. Okay, so just give me a minute. All right, and then while I'm uh, getting this out for everybody, uh, just uh, let me know any questions you have if you're just chiming in here uh, or just tuning in. Uh, okay. Now here we go. All right, there you go. So that should be a link to uh, this playlist. So it should at least get you started with the uh, the mordants, the staccatos, and things like that. Oh, I don't think staccato is really an ornament, but uh, trills and mordants are. So you can at least learn about those uh, until I am able to get a proper lesson out for you uh, on this topic. But good, good question. I will get to that. Uh, that is on my list. All right, let's take a look here back at uh, some questions here. Oh, you're talking about Iris, how to practice ornaments. Um, you should practice ornaments. Uh, ornaments is something you should, it, it's really, uh, I don't know. I'd have to make a lesson on that too. I just can't uh, come up with it on the top of my head. Had a little trouble today. Uh, let's see. Okay, Fireflower says, not really related to two-handed piano playing, but I wanted to ask. Okay, I followed your advice with figuring out the chords in Prelude and C, but it's harder than it looks. Very true. How do you figure out the chords in a measure? Oh, that's a good, that's a good question. I like that. Okay, let me bring up this Prelude and C, and uh, then we can um, answer it from there. Rich, where are you at? You got a question about two-handed piano playing. Uh, let's see. I'm just kidding with you. Uh, let's see. Okay, one of the students in our live stream, Fireflower, was working on the well-tempered clavier, the uh, Prelude in C by Bach, and they were wondering, let's take a look. Uh, Fireflower asks, how do you figure out the chords in a measure? Very, a very good question. So I was telling Fireflower that it's really uh, helpful to memorize this piece, in, in terms of memorizing this piece, to figure out what the chords are measure to measure, because that way, not only are, do you have the muscle memory of how the notes move, but I can also use the chord knowledge to make sure I'm playing the right notes at the right time as well, and to double check and if I'm doing it by memory and I get screwed up somewhere and, you know, what, what happens a lot of times in, when people mess up on memory, they get caught in a loop because music is so similar 
in passages, you'll have one passage very similar to the other, except that the second passage at the very end, it changes a little bit. Well, a lot of people, when they memorize, they get stuck in this loop where they're playing the same thing over and over because they can't quite remember the difference at the end of that section. Well, knowing your chords will help you. It just gives you a little bit more information to go off of. So here's how you figure out the chords in each measure. Step one, play all of the notes, um, especially in this piece, it works out pretty well. Play all the notes at once that are going on instead of separately in arpeggios. You wanna play them all at once. And then you wanna say, okay, what notes are in this chord? I, say, I see a C, E, a G, and a C and an E. Well, you don't, no need to actually double any notes up. We already have a C and an E, so I can take those out there. And hey, if I play all three of these notes, I have a C major chord. Again, it really helps to know your chords. I'll try to link you to a, a playlist when I post this to learn more about them and mastering them. Then in the second measure, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna play all the notes at once. Now, you might have to be a chord master to figure some of these out, but you know they're not overly difficult if you know your triads and seventh chords. Okay, now I have the notes uh, C, D, A, D, and F. The first thing I like to do, first of all, is eliminate any duplicates. So the D is out because we already have a D on the bottom. I also kind of like to move all of the notes within the same octave because it gets a lot easier to figure out. So you see how this F is up here kind of by itself when I play this chord? Well, let's take it and let's move it down an octave. And you see how everything now fits within just a few notes. It definitely fits within an octave. Well, you may not recognize this chord the way it is because if you invert it, move the C up, you might recognize it now as a D minor seventh chord. You have the notes D, F, A, and C. If you're not familiar with your chords, you can look up uh, a, like a chord speller online. I don't really have one to link you to right now because I do have them all up in the noggin. I, that's what I actually recommend because the, the more things you have up in your head, those tools, without having to look them up, you're going to be able to learn uh, things a lot faster. I know it takes time. It can be frustrating, but that's what I recommend. But anyway, you want to take a look at the notes you have and then either using your brain or the internet, figure out what chord that is. It happens to be a D minor seventh. So we have C major, D minor seventh, then going down to the next line, we have the notes B, D, G, D, and F. Well, what's rule number one or, or step number one? Take out any notes that are duplicates. So this D up here, it's gone. Why? Because we have a D down here. Any other duplicates? Um, I don't think so. Step number two, what did I say? Step number two is you want to move all the notes within the same octave. So you see this F right here, way up on its lonesome. Let's move that F, again, like the other chord we did, down all within the same octave. So now we have a nice chord all together now. Now you may be looking at it and be like, I can't really figure out that chord. The next thing I actually recommend that I didn't really put into words before is you want to try to put the chord into root position. So you, you invert it until you get it in root position. You'll know it's in root position because everything's evenly stacked. So I have to keep inverting it since I have a cluster down here and those are evenly spaced. But now when I move the F up, hey, everything's evenly spaced. You have a note, not a note, a note, not a note, note, not a note, note. That means it's in root position. And really what that means in fancy talk is that the name of the chord, G, is on the bottom. So we know it's some kind of G chord. Since it has four notes evenly spaced, you can also say that you know automatically without looking it up that it's some kind of seventh chord, right? And we have a major on the bottom, minor seventh up top. Now this part requires some chord knowledge or you'll have to look it up, but it's a G dominant seventh. So we have C and then the next one was D minor seven and then G dominant seven. And hey, that's the first chord we had again, uh, second line, second measure in. So that's C major. And then this one, uh, this is at the end of line two. This is the last one we'll do right now. So let's go over the three or four steps I talked about. What's step number one? Eliminate any duplicates. So A is out, right? Because we already have an A. E is out because we already have an E. So we have the notes C, E, and A. 
And then what's the next step? Well, try to put it in root position. And you would do that by inverting it. You take the bottom note out, you leave these two notes where they are, you move that bottom note up an octave, and you're like, well, are we evenly spaced yet? Well, no, not really. There's a bigger space at the bottom of the chord. You invert it again, and hey, that's an A minor chord. And as you're going along, especially if you're a beginner, actually write the chord names, not the individual notes, but the chord names uh, above each measure, or maybe in each measure, so you can um, later, you don't have to like refigure all this stuff out. But if you're really fast at it, C major, uh, D minor 7, G dominant 7, C major, A minor. Uh, this next one, you may not know about this. This is the next one, but I know it right away just by playing it. This is what's called a secondary dominant 5 of 5 chord. You may have no idea what that is. I'll have to talk about that in another lesson. Uh, this is a G major. So I'm pretty far advanced with my chords, a C7 right there, C major 7, that as soon as I play them, I kind of know uh, exactly what chord it is. But that does take a lot of time to get the hang of. So again, if you want to learn more about how to play chords, I'll make sure to put a link for you uh, somewhere in the video once I post it. All right, let's take a look at the uh, next question. Okay, here we go. Hey, Rich, thanks for answering that question. Okay. Okay, our awesome student Julio asks, Julio asks, when you are practicing two-handed playing and then you've completely messed up the rhythm, but you got all the notes right, should you keep going? Well, that's an interesting question. It depends on really one thing. Uh, one is, are you uh, sight reading the piece? Like if you're sight reading, which means you're reading it for the first time ever, and you're just trying to get from the beginning to the end because that's how you practice sight reading, then any rhythm mistakes you make, you just want to kind of keep going. The idea is that you want to get from beginning to end, I mean, with as few mistakes as possible, but you're not cleaning up the mistakes because then it's not really sight reading anymore. But if you are learning a piece and you know, like say, you know, I'm learning this prelude in C, and you know, I get to the second measure. I just put a swing on it. But if you're like, hmm, that doesn't, you know, that rhythm doesn't sound right. It doesn't match with the first rhythm I had. Or, you know, maybe I, I, I played a dotted quarter note when I should have played a, a regular quarter note or something like that. If you spot the mistake and you're learning a piece for real, you're brushing it up, maybe you're going to play it for somebody or yourself, um, you definitely don't want to uh, just move on and ignore mistakes big no no but if you're sight reading and then the whole point of sight reading is that you're just trying the goal is really just can you get from point a to point b and most of the notes as accurately as you can in between but not stopping and, and wiping everything up so that's what i recommend if, you, if you're sight reading you just keep going if you are learning a piece uh really learning it do not ignore the mistakes you definitely want to go over that measure until you got it Oh, that's a great question. I like that one. They've all been actually they've been all been pretty good so far. I'm liking them now. They're good. Hi, Unicorn Rainbow. How you doing? Thank you very much. A question about two handed. How do I see when I have uh, the cross the left hand over the right hand when the lines are down? Um, it will tell you most of the time. 
like in the, I unfortunately don't have an example and I can't really think of one I can bring up right now. We'll have to do a lesson on hand crossing. I, I really considered that for like November, uh, making that a lesson, uh, but it just didn't come. Uh, like I have it written down. I just don't have it. Um, it just didn't make the list for uh, November. So maybe in December, maybe in January, uh, I will definitely, well, hopefully we'll cover that. Please remind me if I do. Uh, hand crossings are tricky. It will actually tell you a lot of times. Uh, it will actually say LH. You know, even though if it's written up on the treble clef, it'll sell, it'll say LH cross a lot of times. If the composer is nice. <clears throat> now, some other things you might figure out is that you might see a pattern of notes and you're like, well, you know, that right hand fingering doesn't fit at all. Well, that could mean that your hand crosses occurred and that you'll have to play them there. Again, I'll have to make a lesson uh, going into this uh, in more detail with some examples I'll have to pick out ahead of time because unfortunately I'm just blanking on like a specific uh, example to bring up. Salvador, what do you do when you're playing a piece and both the treble clef and bass clef show the same note at the same time? What do you do? Do you just play one of them? Yes, you only play one of them. Um, if it's a melody note, so, you know, if I'm playing uh, Jingle Bells or something like that, or like... And say that they, like, the in the song, they wanted me to double the C here. And I'm going to get to the C in the melody. I'm going to play it with the right hand, because that's where the melody is, right? So the melody, in my view, uh, I don't know if this is, like, an official thing... But when you have that double note thing, which actually they really shouldn't do. That's kind of against... I remember in music theory class, we would get points off if we did that. Uh, but anyway, so when I'm playing the piece, and I need to hit that C with the melody, the right hand's going to take precedent. If the melody was in the left hand, the left hand would take precedent. But honestly, so long as you play the right note, you're probably okay. But yeah, you only have to play one of them. Okay, Martin says, hey, Tim, although not entirely related to two-handed piano playing, although I disagree, I think it is, uh, how do you improve finger accuracy? I have been practicing for quite some time, but no matter how much I practice, sometimes my fingers slip. Yeah, this, this problem is very common, and it takes a long time for it to go away. In fact, it's a problem I still deal with. As you know, if I, if I play a piece cold for you on the live stream, my fingering is horrendous, and people who are knowledgeable in the comments uh, will let me know. Like, just let you know your fingering uh, is really bad. And the thing about that is, is if I don't go through the fingering ahead of time and fix it and, like, actually write it down... Actually, that's a tip I have for you, is write down the fingering that you're using because what will happen a lot of times... Now, you don't have to write down every single finger everywhere and drive yourself crazy, but especially for difficult passages write down the fingering you're using and stick to it. Don't deviate from it because a lot of those problems do come from when students, myself included, pick a different fingering for something each time. So like if I'm doing an arpeggio, I do like to do one, two, three, one, two, three, five, three, two, five, one, three, two, one, like that. But say um, I, I did it different every time. One time I do two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three with a G major. It just doesn't make any sense. I want to use the same fingering every time. Scale passages. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. You want to use that. If you ever see a scale passage, use whatever fingering you use for that scale and be consistent about it. So the first tip I have for you is be consistent along with writing in the fingering for any tough passages. The uh, second thing I have to tell you with finger accuracy and how to improve it is actually a lot of the exercises I mentioned. So uh, things like Hannon exercises, uh, which we have, I thought we had right here, but we do not. Uh, where are you? Here we go. So things like Hannon exercises are great because you will start on a note and use a certain fingering to get through the passage. Sometimes they write them in for you. And you need to be consistent about that finger. You don't want to mess it up at all or mess with it. 
So that comes in as well. So you really want to apply the consistency rule along with writing them in where you need it to just different uh, exercises that we've already done. So the hand and ones, uh, the charity, I think they, uh, he does a good job at, or the editor anyway. Uh, let me show you here on the screen. Uh, writing in the fingerings for you. Now they don't write in every fingering because like I said, they only do it in the tough parts. And actually for this, he only does it where your fingers are crossing, which makes sense because a lot of times um, when you're playing, you know, if you're playing a string of five notes right in a row, you don't really need to know what the fingering is because a lot of times it's five, four, three, two, one. But a lot of students struggle with the finger crosses. So that's why in this case, he gives you the finger crosses. So, so do a lot of things we talked about for the two-handed piano playing but just uh, be very consistent about the fingering. Also, the last tip I'm going to give you about this is the tip. It's the ultimate tip that gets everybody through a lot of the struggles. It's, it doesn't solve everything, but it really, really helps. And that is what? To go slow, right? So slow down your playing if you feel like your, your fingers are messing it up and you're struggling to maintain that consistency at a certain speed. That means you need to slow it down a few notches, but a terrific question uh, on that. So thank you very much for that. Okay, how do we practice minor scales? Uh, great. Did I have a, did I have one on minor scales recently? No, I didn't. Uh, so Summer Chan, I will. I am making a minor scales uh, guide. So you remember, I did one on the major scales a couple of weeks ago. I think you might have even been there for that one. So I will do a lesson on that. Is the answer is that uh, that is coming in the works. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing okay, Luke. I kind of need a break. We're taking... Oh, one thing I want to mention uh, while everybody's here. We are taking off next week. We're taking off Friday and Sunday. So we're just taking off for normal times. There may be a daytime live stream snuck in there somewhere just to kind of touch base with everybody uh, in the meantime. It'll probably just be uh, you know, a question and answer session on just some other topic, uh, I think. This is a good idea. Um, I really like the question and answer things. From now on, I think they're all going to be centered around a central topic. Now, you'll be able to ask other questions like we have uh, had tonight, um, but I really think it's working better to have them around uh, the same topic. That way I can connect all the videos together better. Helps me edit uh, a little bit better. But remember that we're off next uh, Friday and Sunday. All right, let me uh, ask answer some more questions. Wait, let me give you a date, uh, dates on that, because if you're watching the recording, you may not know what I'm talking about. Uh, okay. So we are off Friday the 8th and also Sunday the 10th. And we will resume lessons. I cannot believe it. The 15th, it's going to be the 15th, so the week before Christmas-ish, you know, a little bit more. We're going to have some great lessons coming out. I'm really going to try to craft some lessons uh, that you guys, I hope you're going to like. They're going to be a mix of like uh, holiday and Christmas kind of lessons along with uh, some of the things I normally do. But I'm really going to spend some time, hopefully, to make something uh, that you will enjoy for this holiday season because I know some people with the holiday coming up uh, that they do have a bit more time to work on stuff. All right, Fireflower says, thanks, Tim. That really helps. I'm excited to try this later. You're very welcome. Salvador says, I don't really have problems reading chords because not knowing a lot of the chords, I still figure out the chords on sheet music fast. Well, that's 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 not bad. At first, I was going to discourage you from that. I still recommend you learn your chords, especially if you ever plan on getting into music theory. Um, but if you're able to translate the chords right away, then you might be able to get away with that. I still recommend you learn your chords, but um, that is great that you are able to process them uh, very quickly. 
Uh, Lion says, I recently started playing piano. It's kind of hard for me to play with both hands. What should I do to play with both hands flawlessly? Well, I don't know if you'll ever be able to play flawlessly because I don't. I sure don't. You know that. Anybody in the live stream knows that I don't play perfectly. <laughs> I play well, but I definitely don't play perfectly or flawlessly. Uh, let's see. It's kind of hard for me to play with both hands. Okay, so if you just started learning how to play piano, I'm going to tell you a couple things. One, if you're in the first few weeks, don't worry about it yet. I mean, you want to keep it in your mind that it's something you want to work on. But if you're honestly look in your first few weeks of learning, you want to be learning uh, like where the notes are on the piano, where the notes are on the staff, you know, how to translate those notes onto the piano and things like that. It's very, 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 very normal that in your first few weeks of playing that you're going to be struggling with two-handed piano playing. Um, so it's something that will come with time. Some good things to kind of get yourself uh, into the right mode with this would be to learn a few scales like learn uh, the C major scale and then the G major scale and things like that I actually have a lesson I just put out about learning scales I'm actually gonna link that to you right now since it's very uh, relevant so everybody just give me a minute and uh, I'll link it here uh, for lion All right, so I'm getting uh, this lesson. Feel free to let me know any comment or questions in the meantime. Okay. Um, Okay, so there you go. That is uh, the um, link to all 12 major scales along with fingering. If you're just starting out, just start with the C major scale, the G major scale, and maybe the D major scale. And that will get you the very basics of playing hands together. Some other things uh, that we also mentioned tonight that I think would help are the hand and exercises. So just type in hand and exercises into Google and it should uh, bring it up. It's it's on the page, hand and dash online.org or something like that or dot com dot com you'll find it if you type it into google uh synthesia is definitely not better than sheet music i recommend that you stay away from synthesia times 10 because synthesia is like a, a crutch what synthesia is great for is if you're not really interested in learning piano and learning it long term and learning the the whole goal of this channel really is to give you the tools so you can begin learning pieces on your own well with synthesia synthesia is very uh obviously there's no explanation at all you're just hitting it's like guitar hero which you may have played where the bars come down and you have to hit them at the right time it it helps a little bit with coordination and things like that uh, but not much, and, and not anywhere compared to doing it for real, reading the sheet music. Uh, Synthesia, like I said, is really if you're only interested in learning one or two songs, you're not interested in you know going out on your own, learning your own song, you know, like say, oh, I want to learn Little Drummer Boy for Christmas. Well, if you've been watching the channel and you've been looking through all the videos, you should have some inkling or some idea on how to basically approach the piece Little Drummer Boy and learn it on your own. However, if you learn Little Drummer Boy on Synthesia and then you wanted to learn another piece, well, you'd have to learn it on Synthesia again and not every piece is on Synthesia. And also, Synthesia does not tell you the dynamics. It does not tell you uh, the articulations, which is like how you know short or long to play the notes. So there's a lot of expressive things also that are missing from synthesia so i highly recommend you stay away from it um like i said if you just want to learn one piece and that's it but the chances are is if that's your goal you're probably not here right now i mean everybody who's here probably has some interest in learning piano in the longer term or at least getting the skills enough to begin learning songs on your own i read a really interesting article when i was in college that 
um, our professor, Dr. Cranmer, made us uh, do, which was, and basically the premise was that a teacher's ultimate goal is to get the student to teach themselves and learn on their own. Now, obviously, they won't be able to learn everything on their own. The teacher has to still guide them, but the, that's really the goal. Like, so my goal with the channel is to really give you the tools so you can get go out on your own. And Synthesia, it really runs against. So you will never see me, uh, at least hopefully not, uh, promote Synthesia. Okay, so Salvador says, yeah, I don't want to stop uh, using sheet music. Very good. Tim, when playing by ear and improvising, any tips on to come up with the correct fingering, uh, specifically for the melody part? Um, you know, that's something that's really just going to come with time. Like, like that's and, and again, uh, with the fingering, I don't, I don't, I don't think it was your question. I think it was another person's question about maintaining uh, a constant fingering. So when you're improvising, one of the challenges is is that you're not going to be playing the same thing every single time. I mean, you can do that. Then it becomes less improvisation and more of like an impromptu piece that you made uh, that you're playing over and over again, which actually when you're first learning to improvise isn't a bad idea because it gives you structure. With improvising, I like to really, when I'm, I'm first teaching students uh, improv, to really focus on structure, you know, just get the chords down, get a simple melody down, don't go crazy with it, but then you start going crazy with it, right? And a lot of times, uh, it's hard to maintain that consistency in the fingering, like I talked about, because it's different each time. And it's something that, in my experience, comes with just playing around with it and, and, and getting used to different patterns. So, like, when I am playing B-flat blues, right, that scale... you know, has a certain fingering to it. So I'm gonna use that fingering whenever I see the scale. Now, if I'm doing like octaves, you know, it makes sense to use one and five. So it's really just something that as you play different patterns and you get used to what works best, like arpeggios, five, three, two, one, three, two, one, for two octave arpeggios, you wanna use that fingering for those different patterns that you come across. So. I know it's not as concrete of an answer as you may have wanted, but it is improv, so it kind of fits uh, the subject matter where it's always changing. So the, the little tools and patterns you come across, uh, make sure you play those with the same fingering uh, for the most part each time. But you'll never get perfect at it. I still improv and run out of fingers every, every once in a while. No, it's not. Even Tim doesn't recommend it. Okay, you're talking about uh, Fulia. Okay, Rich says, Martin, uh, that happens to me all the time. Uh, what do I... What I do to keep my fingers from slipping is practicing scales and arpeggios extremely slow or working on uh, hitting each note accurately. Okay, so you basically um, agree with me, Rich, and it's really great to see that like one of our students here um, is actually you know practicing this stuff and uh, on his own really. Well, and I may have brought it up at some point. Um, you know, has really figured this out on his own, and you know, as you can see, it works great for him, and that's also what I highly recommend. So thank you very much for chiming in here, Rich. I appreciate that very much. And when it's time to play a song, your muscle memory will keep your fingers hitting the right place on the key. That is very true. The muscle memory is good with that. Martin says, oh, thank you, Tim and Rich. Great answers. I'll keep uh, what you both said in mind. Okay, Unicorn says, I love Hannon. I still in exercise six, though. I really want to play scales and arpeggios already, but I remind myself to be patient. You can actually begin learning your scales and arpeggios and practice the Hannon um, in this in the same lesson. I was going to say at the same time. You don't want to play it, you know, scales and then uh, Hannon in one uh, in one hand. Uh, but you you can begin learning them at the same time. So you can maybe start learning the key of C, uh, the scale G, things like that. 
Uh, how do I start uh, learning piano? I have a keyboard here. Actually, I want to go back to Unicorn's uh, comment real quick. But you don't want to layer on too many things at once. So if you feel like you're overwhelmed with the Hannon, don't start learning scales yet until obviously you've learned uh, more of the Hannon. Okay, uh, Jonas... Uh, Jos... Jos... <laughs> sorry. Josanity. Hosanity, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. How do I start on learning piano? I have a keyword here, but I don't know where to start. Excuse me, I had a burp. Uh, great question. Let me link you uh, to something that, let me show you first and actually then link you to it. Because it's always good to let people know how to properly browse the channel. Because everybody uses YouTube a little different. Actually, you know what, before I started you, um, being on YouTube, making lessons, I didn't even subscribe to anybody, and now I do, uh, but only because you know, I'm kind of part of the community here. Uh, so let's take a look here. So there, you know, type in lessons on the web. Make sure to subscribe if you're not uh, already. That always helps. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is go on the main channel page, lessons on the web, you know, youtube.com slash lessons on the web. And you scroll down, and you notice how it says lessons for beginner piano students uh, right here. And then there's a playlist that says a beginner start here. Piano Lesson Set 1, and that is where you want to start, but let me link it to you also in the chat so you know exactly and make sure you got the right one. So just everybody give me a second. Hey, Fuddy Duddy says, got to run. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for coming out, Fuddy Duddy. I didn't even know you were here. <laughs> but I'm glad you were able to make it out, and hopefully you can catch the recording later on. Okay, Tim, I'll try C major. All right. Use that method to do normal speed tutorial. I find them useful for some time. Okay. Thank you for this. You're very oh, welcome. So ho hopefully that... Well, I know it will, actually. That's the best place to start. If you're a beginner, it will actually give you a lot of the tools you're going to need to even understand with a, a lot of the topics we talk about in the live stream. And it will definitely help you get started. And also in, in the comments of any of the videos, if you need any help, uh, let me know. If I can't get to them, a lot of times the other students will. Like Rich, for example, uh, at least in the live stream, he does a good job at getting to the questions that I uh, miss. But I do notice that a lot of times in the comments, other people will chime in as well, which I always encourage. It's amazing. Amazing that we have such a thoughtful and uh, helpful community. I love it. Okay, uh, how many scales are there in total? There are a ton. Um, let me see what Joe Smith says. Uh, 12 major scales, but with minor scales, they include a total of 36 scales. Yeah, because you have 12 majors, and then you really have at least two versions of each minor. You have natural minor and uh, harmonic minor. I recommend you at least learn harmonic minor. So you have anywhere between 24 and 36 scales, and then you have all the modes. But you don't have to practice the modes on a regular basis to be a piano player. It is important to know about them and what they are. I do want to make a lesson on modes at some point. Just kind of give you a rundown on the basics uh, behind it. Okay, I think I got to almost everybody's question. I really want to tell everybody how much I appreciate you uh, chiming in uh, with some questions here. I always like these 
uh, question and answer sessions to be uh, full of life and not. I know when we first started doing them, uh, you know, when I first started doing the live stream, I would get like one or two questions and then the whole thing would fizzle out and it'd be kind of frustrating. So I really want to thank everybody for making the night for me. Uh, I'm really happy with the questions we had here today. It was a really, uh, a really nice and enjoyable discussion. And I think a lot of people are going to uh, really enjoy the answers uh, that I gave and, and the questions as well uh, once I post up the uh, uh video so rich asked me again uh tim have you been working on any new music unfortunately no the main thing i have um other than finishing out the year strong with the channel is uh i'm working on two main things um I, i've been all business for the last uh few years because i'm you know i'm trying to make a living at this and build the channel and it's really important for me to uh, get out there and teach as many people as i can so unfortunately i have not uh, I have not created any new music in quite a while, but the main things I'm working on right now are the channel, obviously coming up with like what we're going to be doing to the end of the year. I'm also, I need, um, I'm in the process of hiring somebody to help me take, uh, the lessons I have on YouTube and convert them into a format for Facebook. And then I'm going to make a, a, another Facebook page besides lessons on the web and post uh, daily videos to those because I need to start building an audience uh, over on Facebook too. the the main th the main problem I had uh, with Facebook and the mistake I was making because I couldn't figure out what the benefit was really other than another avenue to get in communication with you all, which is nice. It, you know that is very helpful. But the the mistake I was making is I was trying to move you all from YouTube onto Facebook, and the best way to do it actually is to get on Facebook, post content there build the audience there and then actually combine the audiences like that. So that's the, really the plan for 2018 is to start uh, building on Facebook. Cause some people are, a lot of people actually are doing really well on Facebook. And I've heard actually somebody in the live stream told me uh, that uh, there's no real good piano um, series on Facebook. Like there's a couple of pages with some lessons uh, but it doesn't really go in order, and it's not really as comprehensive as the ones I do. So I really want to get on Facebook in the new year, and I'm actually going to have to hire somebody uh, to help me do that because I'm already like totally booked is, uh, as far as time uh, time goes. Uh, you also bring up another great uh, point, Rich. I'd like to see you tackle a song and see the process of doing it. I've considered this for a long time. And in fact, it's becoming more and more of a reality because I think I can make a really good uh, lesson on this, uh, my own like process of learning a song. I think that would be great. Let me let me make sure I have this written down just so I don't forget. It is in my mind, though. I have been thinking about this a lot, uh, but I do want to make sure I have it on the list. So let me get uh, let me get this set up here real quick. It should take like five seconds, a little bit more than five seconds. Well, that's okay, Salvador, because it's okay if you can't use Facebook because I'm still going to be doing everything over here on YouTube. And actually, a lot of the content I'm putting on Facebook is over here on YouTube already. It's just uh, Facebook likes uh, the content to be in a certain format, so I have to I have to fiddle with it. I don't know. It's a, a, a pain. All right, let's see here. So don't worry about it. There's still great content coming on uh, for Facebook. Okay, now Rich, I was going to write down his content ide idea. Or make sure I have it written down. I probably do. So just give me a minute. Uh, electric llama. Um, 
I'm stuck on a song. Can you tell? What can you tell me? Uh, it's called Heathen. Okay. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I haven't seen the piece, unfortunately. Uh, and I actually don't take this request as much. Uh, only because I have to... I'll tell you what. If you can email me, Tim at LessonsOnTheWeb.com, Electric Llama, and you can uh, get me like a screenshot or maybe even the music itself and send it to me as a, um, you know, like an attachment, that would be amazing. Uh, then I could look at it and actually, um, you know, uh, answer that question. Uh, do you have any advice on getting out uh, of your own head when playing? I always second guess myself when it comes to certain things. I do on things like dynamics, wondering uh, if I'm playing at the right volume. So I do. Uh, step one, memorize the piece. Memorize it. Uh, notes, note-wise. That will take the notes out of your mind. You'll, you'll have them down. You don't have to spend the extra brain power processing them. And then you can actually, this sounds, this is more of like a, uh, more of a, an artsy feely kind of thing. Then when you get it memorized, try to open up your ears and really listen to what you're playing. This takes some practice. It takes time. You may even want to record yourself. And uh, you also want to, after you have the song memorized, listen to like a professional recording of it. And also, look, I mean, read along with it on the sheet music. You can see what the dynamics are supposed to be. But the big thing I have to tell you is memorize the piece. It's really, really helpful. Um, they made us do it in college all the time. And, and the teachers would always tell me the same thing. Once you have the notes to, memorized, you don't have to spend the, the brain power doing it. And then you can actually begin not, not like micromanaging the dynamics, but you can actually begin to just kind of relax while you're playing, like I said, it takes some time to get used to this and really listen to what you're playing. And then you can begin to control the dynamics uh, a lot easier. Because if you're still learning the notes, or even say you do have the notes learned, but you don't have it memorized, you're still spending extra processing power in your brain. So it can be really frustrating trying to juggle all these things and, and then you're not sure whether you're loud enough or not, things like that. So memorizing the piece uh, will help a great deal. And then listening to like some recordings uh, of the piece as well should should help you out and just kind of like, I would actually, after a while, I would listen to a recording uh, of the piece you're learning uh, kind of on a regular basis. So you know intrinsically, because you've been listening to it for so long, where the uh, swells are in the dynamics, where the, the small parts are, things like that. So then you'll have a much better uh, internal idea on how that's doing, on how that uh, happens. Actually, uh, let me let me write one. I actually have another lesson idea that just came from uh, Rich's comment, and that lesson idea. Wait, hold on. <laughs> let me get the right thing up. And that lesson idea is the uh, benefits of memorizing music. So I think I'm actually going to, and actually how to memorize a piece. I've never talked about that on the channel. So I think that's going to be a great, a great topic. Okay, I'm going to answer two qu more questions really, really quick. Because I am going to cash out here. I actually didn't think we were going to make it all the way to 9 o'clock. Uh, just because I wasn't sure whether we'd have enough questions. And I was feeling kind of... Kind of tired, but uh, I'm doing well now. But we are going to wrap it up soon because I do have things to do uh, tomorrow and get ready for. That helps a lot. Thanks, Tim. I'm trying to learn uh, Sonatina, and it's relatively simple, but the dynamics is what's troubling me. So, yeah, memorize it, and then uh, do the other things I said, the other advice I had, and then get back to me. Let me know how that's working out for you because I do like to check up every once in a while and make sure uh, you know everybody's on the right track. Could you do a video, if you haven't already, about setting goals as a beginner? 
especially with the new year around the corner. Okay, I like how you put that like new year spin on it. So like it's like, hmm, that you know, that would be a good idea. I like how you did that. I don't know if you did that on purpose, but it was uh it was crafty. I like it. Um, I'm going to write that down, to be honest with you. I, that idea jive with me pretty well. I, I think I have made a lesson on this. I'm going to have to double check, but on the top of my head, I don't, I'm not sure. So let me write it down. Uh, sorry about that. That's weird. That burp tasted like Old Bay. <laughs> like Old Bay spice, but I didn't eat any of that. Okay, so I think I got pretty much to everybody's question. Uh, if I didn't... Oh, wait. Uh, Julio says... Uh, I do want to answer this question because this question does come up a lot and I do want to uh, answer it. Julio asked, Tim, I'm interested to see your piano covers. Can you upload some on YouTube? The answer, unfortunately, with this channel and the direction I want to take it is no. <laughs> um, you, you may have seen a lot of other piano uh, teachers, like the pi Violin Piano Tutor does a lot of covers and things like that. And she's been able to grow her channel quite a bit with that. The problem is is that with covers, same thing with the kind of like Synthesia, is a lot of the people are only interested in learning that song or they get the impression that the whole channel is about covers. Because a lot of times when a YouTuber subscribes to a channel, and this is really frustrating for creators because you kind of get pigeonholed in a way or cornered a little bit in what you're able to do because if you start doing things that are too eclectic, too all over the place. So say I, I do a, a video um, actually I did one of these like Maroon 5 Sugar years ago and it didn't really, it was really popular. Um, but I found that a lot of the students that subscribed from that video unsubscribed after because what happened was they subscribed thinking and YouTubers subscribe to a channel thinking that they're getting a certain type of video based on the video they've seen. So then what happens is then when their feed, when they're getting the videos that usually come out, they're like, you know what, I, I don't, you know, unsubscribe. This wasn't really what I was expecting. So I always try to keep things into the same, same kind of thing. So I could, I would have to make another channel uh, for that, unfortunately. All right, everybody. I want to thank everybody uh, for coming out tonight. You really made the lesson tonight for me and I really appreciate it. Um, you know, it really, uh, helped keep me going throughout this lesson. And I was in a really like tired, miserable mood when I first came on. So you really all helped pull me out of that. Uh, you know, I just want to appreciate that you're such, uh, involved in our, uh, live streams and our classroom. So, you know, this has been Tim from Lessons on the Web. Again, we are off next week. We will resume lessons. I believe I said the 15th. Let me look. The 15th of November, 2017. Yep. So off next week, we will come back on the 15th. I'll see you there. I'm going to have some fire lessons for you, some really good ones, uh, so we can finish out the year really strong. And uh, there may be a, li a live stream snuck in uh, between now and the week, you know, during the week we have off, but maybe not. So we're at least having that week um, off as of now. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. Again, you really made my day today. Uh, and I hope that you found the lesson helpful. It seems like a lot of people did. And uh, I really uh, appreciate that. And I, I really think it was possible uh, because you all helped give me such great questions that actually a lot of them I didn't even answer before, which I, I love it. All right. So everybody have a great night. I'm going to see you on the 15th, maybe beforehand, but at least on the 15th. And everybody have a great one. I have. You, I hope you have a great holiday, but I will see you uh, before a lot of that uh, ramps up. So thanks, everybody. This has been Tim from Lessons on the Web, and I'll check you out for the next lesson. Thank you so much.